Okay, well, you saw I got cut off there. That's because you only get 10 minutes on these. So I'm going to wrap this up in the next 10 minutes. Watch me. Uh, coming back to where we were. So we talked about news and that prices are kind of news. The point being that markets become much more efficient. Okay, And he said, since the 1980s, these three forces, politics, economics, and technology, have pushed in the same direction to produce a more open, connected, exacting international environment. That's the bottom of page 25. Okay. And then he gives us a couple of examples. Now he turns to what he calls the problems of plenty. This begins on page 26. And here he's saying there are a few problems. First of all, there are um, rising commodity prices, the price of oil and other com commodities, wheat, uh, ore, all kinds of things like that, bulk goods, has gone up enormously. The other problem is that, um, and, and part of the problem with that is that countries like Venezuela and Iran and Russia get free rides because they are oil producing countries. Um, he also talks about climate as being a problem. He writes about climate being a problem and resources uh, being a problem in, in the face of all of this plenty. The next section is another one of these problems of plenty and that's the rise of nationalism. Okay? On the one hand nationalism is a good thing, it's patriotic and so forth, but He's concerned both about nationalism in these countries. These countries became very, become very proud and, and perhaps too proud and proud in bad ways. So the Indians uh, worry about the Pakistanis, the Pakistanis worry about the Indians and so forth. And also he's concerned about what he calls sub-nationalism. And we've talked a little bit about this concept of identity with some of the groups that um, people, you have to worry if people stop being Americans but instead see themselves as some subset of Americans or maybe not really importantly Americans at all but as some other sub-tribe or sub-group then that can be a real problem and he's concerned about that. He then turns on pages 34 and 35 to um, what he says is a um, frustration in these countries with the prevailing Western view of the world. And my favorite example of that is the way the Americans, and the, uh, the Americans particularly, but also the British, look at what happened in World War II. So take a look at that discussion, and I think that gives you a good uh, explanation. He then says, in the past, now I'm on page 36 here at the bottom, people had an option to, um, to join the Western world or not join the Western world. They could opt in or opt out. And now he's saying we're moving to a world where you don't have to make that choice. On the bottom of 36, the world is moving from anger to indifference, from anti-Americanism to post-Americanism. Uh, he then talks about the Kyoto Accord, beginning on pages 37, 38. And he says the Kyoto Accord, okay, that sounds like a good thing. It's all about environmental protections. But in fact, it's an old-fashioned Western imperial almost uh, approach to this problem to say, We'll get the G7, the Western nations, to join up, and then everybody else will follow. Okay. Now, his last section is the last superpower. Page 40, it begins. And this is all about the United States. And what really should the United States be aware of, and what really should the United States be doing in order to maintain our, um, you know, our lifestyle, our, our position in the world? Okay. And he's saying that basically the Americans have been arrogant and insular, uh, inwardly focused in, in, uh, in their history, and that we shouldn't be. Okay? And he says the irony is, and this is how he concludes the chapter, so here we are at the end of the chapter uh, two. He says the irony is that we've been pushing for the world to be capitalist for a long time now. We've been pushing for free markets, free trade, freedom and democracy. And guess what? It worked. Now we have it. And he's concerned that in the face of this success, Americans are responding and saying, well, hang on, we didn't really mean it. We didn't want you to be uh, as good as us at, at doing all this stuff. So there you have it. That's the end of chapter two, broken up into two parts here on the video. Please do uh, email me, dalbert at salemstate.edu, and let me know if uh, this was useful to you, if you want me to keep doing it, if there's other things I can do, uh, or if I should just go take a shower. Bye. Bye, everybody. So long. Have fun storming the castle.